her staff an outstanding job that they do each and every day to make sure that the uh, citizens of Bear County are looking at how they can grow or have that idea or change that structure. Uh, we also have information this morning for LLCs and what you do with the state, which she will cover. Uh, after that, uh, my team will cover the small business resources and what we do here at, in our office. Uh, so now with that, we're gonna get started. Uh, I think uh, how many, we, we have quite a few people populating and uh, we'll be uh, uh, tracking that all morning. Uh, we've scheduled this for about an hour um, and, and we'll get the transcript and information back to you. Uh, we were very excited when she was elected, uh, the first Latino um, and the first great, great female, uh, Hispanic female elected to the county clerk's office. She has been very innovative in what she's doing and how she's getting more information to the citizens uh, coming from the sheriff's office and, and the law enforcement and, and living in the rural community. Uh, she understands the issues, she understands our communities, and we're very honored that she understands the business community and what we're doing for small business. So we're honored this morning that she has taken time to, uh, to join us, her and her team, to make this presentation. And with that, we welcome the Honorable Lucy Anami Clark. Thank you. Thank you, Renee Watson. I really appreciate being here with you this morning. It's very important that we let our community know that we're still working. And I'm glad to have you as a partner as well, knowing you back to the early 2000s. Uh, it matters to have that partnership with SWIMBY. And you're a very important person, an important uh, topic that's always being talked about because as a county clerk, we do all the issuing of the DBAs, assume names, and people ask questions about the LLC, the uh, limited liability company information and things change all the time and you know legislation is always changing and people don't realize that it impacts the business here in bear county locally so the secretary of state you can do a lot of research there to make sure that information you need uh, before you come visit the actual county clerk's office is very important as a county clerk we're responsible to do your dd 214 to report that information we keep the uh, minutes of the commissioner's court we handle the civil and the criminal side two probate courts, uh, the Spanish archives, it goes back to 17th century, beautiful historical records. And people don't realize that the historical records has a lot of business information as well that goes back to the early history. Uh, we had a lot of cattle uh, ranchers. We had a lot of uh, people that ran uh, horses companies. We had different kinds of companies that happened back in the days. And people need to realize that the history that's there, it's very important. We handle mental health. We've actually implemented some new ways of doing mental health uh, in the last two weeks. It's been amazing. We do your death and birth certificates. But before you look for a birth certificate, make sure you visit our website because a lot of the birth certificates are actually at the city site. So go visit the city and the county or call us. But I'm excited because we have a lot of online capabilities. Uh, COVID-19, it's very scary. But the beautiful thing about what COVID-19 did was push us into new technology. As we came into office last year, we literally came in working. So I went from uh, one job at the sheriff's office, December 31st at 5 p.m., came into office two days later and started working, wanting to build different ways of doing uh, operations, business, and how to innovate the department. But I have an amazing team. I have an amazing staff. I have 149 employees and they were eager to come to the conference table and do something different. You, it hurts you when you don't have the right people at the table. You know, those people are always in the menu and everything they say doesn't happen. Well, now I have the right people on the table who are making changes here at the county clerk's office. Uh, you can actually, now we have live chat. The beautiful thing about live chat, we are able to provide services to the deaf and impaired. A lot of people don't realize that they need services from businesses. Uh, they also have businesses as well. You have the, what is it, the Lighthouse, Renee? Yeah. We have the Lighthouse that does a lot of business. And we also kept in mind that they are business owners. They need the help of the county clerk's office. And how can they communicate with the county clerk? They're gonna live chat us now and we're able to online, you can actually click on our links and I'll take you directly to the actual department, you need to do business with the county clerk's office. While you look at that link and look at that information, and if you have a question, you can live chat an actual uh, operator here in the county clerk's office. 
There's 13 departments. Uh, we just did that this week. We're still working on that operation. It's the first time ever for Bear County. Nobody's done live chat here in Bear County and we're utilizing that tool for you, our constituents. Living in the rural area is, you see a lot of businesses that are going through a lot of disadvantages, um, watching this, uh, small businesses shut down because they were barely making it. They're in the rural area of South Bear County. So it's kind of heartbreaking, but let's move forward um, to the next slide. We have redesigned the whole website. So if you visit our website, there's a lot of, we're a very diverse city. What does that matter for our DBAs and assumed names? Because when you're doing business in Bear County or in San Antonio, what you realize is there's a, you know, there's an indifference in our culture, our diverse, you know, culture that we have here in Bear County in our beautiful city of San Antonio. And we don't understand each other. We don't know how to communicate. What we did is we asked BCIT to implement an actual uh, translation in our website. So it's only fair that if you come and do business with the county clerk's office, that you take your paperwork, whether DBA or LLC or whatever information you need from the county clerk's office, take it to somebody who's your legal advisor and knows your language. When you come to the county clerk's office, you know, my staff, they know Spanish and English, but they don't know any other language, and we do have translators in Bear County, but it's hard to get them around the whole county. So moving forward, what you can do is visit our website, and then you can translate the information on our website to the language that's familiar to you. And then take that information to your legal advisor or the attorney who's gonna help you do your LLC and have them talk to you about it before you come do business with the county clerk's office. It's very important that we're very transparent. If you look at my information as I was running for office, it was about transparency. And we're not here just to you know, make money, but we're here to provide you the services and make sure it's transparently available to you. We've translated our documents. We're working on translating our documents a little better. Uh, Spanish speaking individuals, we have a different dialogue. So I'm working on translating that information of my office a little bit better on the Spanish side. We've improved our customer service by 100%. Uh, the staff has a new leader in place that really cares about you, the people who are trying to do business with the county clerk's office. And I am one to walk from one building to the other, go shake your hand because I'm wearing my favorite scarf. It's the American dream. It's the American dream to start a business and to do your DBA, doing your business ass or your LLC. It's very important if you find out that you can come to the county clerk's office but during COVID-19, do me a favor. Go and visit our website and go do an SMS with the number, our direct number is 210-335-2216. If that doesn't work, go visit our website and link on to the DBA or assume name. Get your general information there. And then from there, move over to the live chat and go ahead and communicate back and forth with an individual live uh, employee that's here at the county clerk's office or is actually at home ready and you know eager to help you we didn't accept credit cards uh, that was hard for me coming from you know the modern moving forward technology and i said there is just no way everybody has credit cards uh, for people it was like what 2020 for it was a year the county clerk's office never accepted credit cards and people nowadays don't carry cash they carry credit cards so We've seen a big increase as we've implemented the credit cards. We've seen an increase on our DBAs and assumed names. Uh, with Renee Watson, she does a lot of marketing. And I like the fact that she does a lot of marketing. So we were able to utilize banners in the county clerk's office. What I saw was that she was doing her sw uh, swim bee marketing with a lot of banners and other information to help the constituents. We did that. You know, we partnered up and we ended up putting marketing uh, banners all around the county clerk's office to make sure to get you, you know, right directions to the right department and it's been very helpful but the beautiful uh, innovative tool that we created was a mobile satellite the mobile satellite is a beautiful tool because it's able to go anywhere in bear county if i were to build a permanent satellite that i want to sometime soon but if i build a permanent satellite the east the north the south still has to drive to that one location so moving forward it's been very helpful and beneficial for us uh, to create these innovative projects. And I'm glad Renee mentioned that because I'm very proud of that mobile satellite. And Renee and I were talking yesterday and we 
are going back and forth on creating the second vehicle, that's going to be very beneficial to you. But it's hard because you have to understand there's no transportation outside 1604 in certain areas. The south side row area doesn't have transportation. The east side on the row area of the east side does not have transportation outside 1604. And these are communities that are trying to build businesses. And how do we get them to come downtown? You don't. It's hard. You know, they have limited funds. And to get their DBA, it's a lot less expensive than getting your LLC. When you get your, you know, limited liability uh, company business going, there's different reasons why there's a DBA and an LLC. And I want you to know, please do your research when you do your DBA and your LLC because they're, they work in different ways. They protect you in different, form, uh, in different ways. And there's different, different reasons why there's a DBA and an LLC. So please do your research. I'm, I'm urging you to do research on your LLC and your DBA. And it all depends on what kind of business you're trying to do. What is your business gonna operate? How is your business gonna work? So you wanna move forward to the next slide? As you know, I was talking about legislation. We we're talking about legislation. Uh, last year, legislation made some changes here at the county clerk's office. Uh, it affected a lot of counties here in the state of Texas. I'm looking at it again. We're going to revisit it. So follow through with your assumed name DBA for individuals, a business name that does not include the surname of your individual. Uh, say I'm going to do a business under Lucy Adame. I don't really need a DBA. But if I'm going to do a surname of Lucy Adame and something else, then you're going to do a DBA. For a partnership, a business name that does not include the surname or, or other legal name of each joint mentor or general partner, it's very important that you do research. A lot of times when you have an LLC, you really don't have to have uh, employees, but if you do have employees, it's very important that you document your minutes and everything that you have that entails in the LLC. So you want to make sure you keep your documentations and everything if you're going to do an LLC. For an individual or a partnership, a name including surname that suggests the existence of additional owners by including such as a company or company of Son and Sons Associates. I found out yesterday, I'm going to give you an example. We have the Bear County University Hospital. That's their actual LLC. And then you have University Hospital as a DBA. So that was pretty interesting to see that yesterday. So why do we have to file an assumed name or DBA? To file an assumed name or DBA, you need to make sure you protect yourself. When you do the LLC, it gives you more of a protection. If you do a DBA, it has a certain amount of protections, but it also depends on what kind of business you're actually doing. So you wanna make sure you follow up and do more research and Renee will help you on that. That's why when I have people come in, do their DBA or ask questions about LLC, I always ask them to go visit Renee Watson or her team because they can break it down a little bit further and tell you about the liabilities, the partnership, the documentation, and incorporated, unincorporated. So it's very important that when you come and get your DBA with the county clerk's office, get the information you need from us, but do your research. Make sure the name is still available uh, before you come down to the county clerk's office. And we always advise our people, utilize Swimby. Swimby has all the tools, all the information, everything you need to start a very successful business because we don't want you to fail. It's the American dream, like I told you, uh, and you wanna make sure that when you buy, whether it's a DBA or an LLC, make sure that we are there to support you, but we don't want you to fail either. So when you finish with us, go visit Swimby and ask them the questions. They're always available. The beautiful thing about Renee Watson and her team, they're still at work, they're still working, they're still trying to help all these businesses, and they're ready for questions on how do we get out of this COVID-19? How do we get other resources? What do we do? Do I file an abandonment? I do see people coming into the county clerk's office and they're filing abandonments on their actual DBAs and then they're refiling under their children's name. So it's very important that you also know that every 10 years, it's always best to come and renew your DBA. So a lot of people didn't know that when I came into office. They were like, what do you mean I have to renew it? It's always best that you renew it after 10 years and do it a few months before the 10 years are up. So moving forward, you're supposed to be getting some congratulation letters from the county clerk's office, and it'll say it's time to renew your business. And Renee and I have been working very close with that as well too, and we're gonna get together on that. I, my staff is sending you a list, right Renee, as well? So we're working on that as well too. You can go ahead and go forward. 
incorporated business. A lot of things did change on the incorporated business. It uh, came into effect last year. So make sure you go research the information. I am working on that with Renee. I have customers here in Bear County. I don't know how other counties are working, but I have customers here in Bear County that still want to register their DBA, even though they did their business or they did their LLC, they want to do their DBA here locally in Bear County. It's just a little, I guess it's like a protection. Like they feel like their name is secure or their business is secure. So I'm going to look into legislation and see how we can change that or just change the verbiage on that because I want to make sure that whatever service you need here in Bear County is provided to you. You know, legislation is a beautiful thing. They change a lot of things for us, but sometimes all they need is the guidance or the advice of the local counties and they'll change things for us. So we'll, we're going to look into that. We are, we talked about it. Renee and I talked about it yesterday and we're trying to make sure that we get that done for you. So legislation will, is coming up. We'll sit down and we'll discuss it further. We'll keep you updated and post it as we move forward. But I want to give my legislators and everybody in legislation uh, a lot of you know kudos, a lot of support because they do a lot, especially right now. They're looking at COVID-19 changes and I'm trying to stay informed to make sure nothing else is changing that affects the county clerk's business other than COVID-19. So go ahead and forward. Guys, I'm excited to be here with, with this live chat, with this, um, you know, Zoom. Technology is, you know, getting better and better. It's sad that it took COVID to do this, but when uh, Renee did the Swimby uh, Expo, and it was the first time I went as an actual county clerk because I just came into office. Uh, mind you, that van was created in only six months. We didn't come in here and waste no time. We didn't waste your taxpayers' money. We literally came in here running, modernizing, changing, creating, strategizing, and building. That van was built in six months. The only reason we had to do that in six months, like I said, we did see the, you know, the, the service that wasn't being provided all around Bear County, the disconnect of not being able to communicate to our constituents. You know, there was no uh, information out there about the county clerk. Nobody really knows what the county clerk's office does, and it's very important that you know Every function the county clerk's office does has a lot to do with you, the resident of Bear County. So the mobile unit, uh, it can be stationed anywhere. Like I said earlier, you can do anything that happens at the Palo Zondo building at the mobile satellite. So you can register your cattle brand. That's coming up next year, 2021. Uh, we went to the rodeo for the first time ever in history. The county clerk was set up at the rodeo. The ranchers were surprised we were in there. They're like, oh my God, you're here. And a lot of times it takes having communication with other county clerks. So having communication with other county clerks, when I go to these educational conferences, I learn what they did and what I shouldn't do. Or I learn what they did and what I should do. And I'm the, the freshman clerk, but I've listened, I've observed, I've you know, asked the questions. Because it's important that when you go to these educational conferences, you bring back very strong institutional knowledge from other counties within the state of Texas because we fall under the same umbrella. We're just doing things a little different. So registering your assumed name, your DBA, you don't even have to come to the courthouse. It costs you $5 to $20 for parking. Right now, COVID-19, I'm not encouraging you to come to the courthouse. I'm asking you to utilize our scheduling. Uh, for the first time ever, we had to implement some scheduling here at the county clerk's office. So now you have to schedule your appointment, but it's actually more personal. Now that you have to schedule your appointment, you're not just in the line to do a DBA or assume name. Now you're giving a schedule, and I feel important when I'm scheduled to do my business, my DBA or assume name, I feel privileged because now I'm scheduled to have a one-on-one -on -one with an actual county clerk uh, staff member and be able to be uh, addressed in a very personal manner because I've scheduled myself right now during COVID-19 for like about 15 to 30 minutes. And to me, that's a very personal one-on-one -on -one, uh, achievement that's being done by both sides. Because now you're able to ask all the questions, you're able to do all the, everything you need to do. Uh, you're not being pushed to go, you know, we're not moving fast. Now we're focusing on you. I'm not saying we've never done it before, but the way it's happening now, I like it because it's more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You know, we're, we're able to spend more time with you. We do a lot of military discharge paperwork. It's important that you register your DD-214. Please get it done. Uh, a lot of times you need your DD-214 copy or certified copy for a business or when you're buying land, when you're going to school, 
uh, when our individuals pass away, your uh, family members are looking for it, but it's a needed document for many different reasons. So make sure you get your DD-214 recorded at the county clerk's office free. It is free, guys. It is free. You get two free certified copies, and it'll always be secure and confidential at the county clerk's office. Real property, you would be amazed. The county clerk's office has not been impacted on real property. We are functioning at 100%. Uh, E-recording went home. They're doing indexing from the house for the last four weeks, whenever COVID-19 hit, and they're at 100%. So our real property, our land records are at 100%. I'm very proud of that team. They've been, have, I mean, they haven't had any hiccups, they haven't had any issues, and they're working very well. Marriage license, we're still open by appointment only. Why is a marriage license, uh, license important? It's very important because when you do a business, are you a partnership? Are you a sole provider? Are you, what are you doing? So a marriage license happening for deployment, a marriage license happening because individuals have lost their jobs and they're getting married uh, for the benefits. It's sad to say, but we're seeing it because of the benefits for deployment, but also for business. You know, a marriage license is very important for business because are you going to operate together? Or are you going to operate separate? Obtain any information you need from our GIS foreclosure map that's available online 24 hours a day. And of course, our beautiful Spanish archive history. That's some beautiful records. Uh, when we get back, you know, when we open up, we're trying to get all our preservation done. But if you have question on Spanish archive, you can always call 210-335-2216 and we'll get you to that staff, so. As you can see, we never had social media here at the county clerk's office. Why is it important? The millennials. Millennials are being smart. They're opening up businesses. They're doing nonprofits. They're doing many different things and they're going to school and they're trying to support themselves. They've gone very innovative in different ways. So we had to reach out through our social media. So we have our social media that's available at, at all times. And the, the, uh, court, uh, the coordinator, I'm sorry, the project coordinator, Stephanie handles all that. So she's always on point and they're always responding to all your questions. And if we don't have an answer for your question, we're going to find it. Even if you get a hold of the county clerk's office and it's not the right department, we will take time to get you to the right department. You are a very important in individual to the county clerk's office. Whether you're doing business, whether you're doing any kind of business at the county level, we are going to help you. But if you want to do a DBA or assume name or LLC here in Bear County or the state of Texas, Please utilize all the tools we have available online at www.bear.org and look for the county clerk's office. But the beautiful thing about it, now you can live chat or you can click on the actual link to the business and go in there and get the basic information. And if you didn't get your answers there, live chat us or even call us. You can still call us. Call us at 335-2216. And we're still here at work. I have about 35% or 40% of my staff still here at the county clerk's office, they are very determined to work and they want to make sure that you're very successful. As a business, they want you to be successful. We don't want you to fail. We want you to be successful. I know you're going through some hiccups right now if you actually own a business, but Renee Watson and her team are there to assist you and guide you on certain uh, services that are there for that. But as a county clerk, I am here to always be happy to give you your first DBA assumed name or LLC information because that's what we're doing is we're building the economy together and we're going to continue being successful because we are San Antonio and we're Bear County strong. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Um, rather honorable Lucy and Ame Clark. What I'm going to do now is mute Lucy's line. Thank you, ma'am. And Renee, I'm going to find your mic. Renee, are you on? Yes. Okay. Uh, this is the transition, I believe, where we're going into our office. Uh, we're going to show a very special video of the process here at the county clerk's office. This video is posted on our website. I am Bear County Clerk Lucia Nami Clark. Perhaps you've been thinking about opening your own business. Where do you start? You begin in my office by establishing a DBA. Let's get started. This is Susan. Just, uh, Susan is a veteran. Phone. She has an awesome business name, and because she knows not to use her social security number for her business, she now has to register for a DBA or doing business as. It's much simpler than you think. 
Once you have your preferred business name, visit the Bear County Clerk's Office at Bear County Paul Elizondo Tower, 210-335-2223. It's easy to find because it's right next to the courthouse. Go to the first floor, Suite 120, behind the Notary Public on-site window. This is where you will file the official registration of your business or company with a DBA. Again, do not use your social security number to do business. Use your EIN. You can find information on how to file, obtain needed forms, and answer any questions online at www.bear.org slash SMWBE or by calling 210-335-2478. Now go make your dream a reality and take the first step to start your business today. Attention veterans. Thank, thank you. That, the rest awesome of the video you can be able to see online. So we're going to stop the video here. And the rest of the video you'll be able to see online. It has some information about our veteran service office and some feedback uh, from some of our uh, small business owners. So the DBA, um, the kind of Miss uh, Donna Clark went through that. And I don't know if you want to finish on uh, just make reference to your website because we were going to bring up the clerk's website so you can show that. And the website is going live as well. So we're excited because if you go visit our website, it has been updated every other day. As COVID-19 is moving forward, we're moving forward on better ways of doing business or technology-wise, we're improving it, but also we're keeping you posted on our departments. We are open Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We are closed on Tuesday and Thursdays, but we are open for the government uh, business here. My staff is just trying to keep up with the workflow on Tuesdays and Thursdays. They're still working here at the, at the county clerk's office, but they're trying to keep up with the workflow that's coming through the mail. So moving forward, make sure you visit my website. If you can see here on the website, you can actually go and let me see here. You can scroll through our website and you can come and visit. Sir, come here, Stephanie. I'm sorry. You can, I was gonna, so there you go. So you can go visit our website, go to the county clerk's office. So let's go down. Let's go up. Book an appointment? Yeah, book an appointment. So I'm gonna take you over to book an appointment. See on the top it says click here to book your appointment and there's gonna be different departments. And actually we're actually one of the first ones that created the appointment uh, link here in our website because it's very important that we actually keep our traffic to the minimum. We did realize there was a lot of people coming in. We have more than 10 people coming in, so we had to stop that. So moving forward, we put this about a few weeks ago. And if you see here, it has a marriage license and formal marriage license and then online assumed name. You can go on there and you're going to click on that information and you can just download your application, fill out your application so you can have it when you come in but also book your appointment. And I don't know how my, you wanna to go to the appointments? If you go to the appointments, I've noticed that my appointments for my marriage license and DBAs are going pretty fast. So that's telling me that y'all are doing good on trying to build a business or what y'all are trying to do. So moving forward, you can see um, Thursday and I'm sorry, so it's Tuesday and Thursdays were closed, but Monday, Wednesday and Fridays were open. Go on there and then you can go and book your appointment. But then while you're booking your appointment, you can go back and you can go to the front to the uh, beginning of our website and actually do a live chat. So you wanna go and live chat with somebody. Is it on there right now? So I wanna do assume names, general information. For more information, so it's gonna take you to a link, so I don't want that. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna say, um, what is the cost? Say so say no. So because you're in the DBA assumed name, you can say, what is the cost for a DBA? What is the cost for a DBA? And what I like about it, because you are actually able to look at your information and see what you need for a DBA assumed name, but then you can be live chatting with an individual and they'll be talking to you and telling you, okay, do not provide date of birth or security number at any time. You want to make sure we keep you safe and secure with your information, make sure that information is not going 
live on live chat. You never want to, you know, there's so much uh, fraud being committed and there's so many different things happening. You don't want to compromise your information. So right there, you see somebody already came in. Hi there, the cost for DBA is $22. Great, thank you. So that was pretty quick. That was pretty quick. That's just a general information. Uh, Renee, do you want to ask something? Um, do, do you take cat? Do you accept credit cards? So am I typing or somebody else typing? Steve is typing away. And my team, when we implemented, uh, Stephanie is actually the, the go-getter for that project. Uh, we saw it happening in Tarrant County. You know, we're relying on other counties for their services. And Tarrant County Clerk's Office had live chat. So I called Ms. Mary Louise up in Tarrant County and said, hey, what are you running up there? And she said, I'm still running everything the same way you are, Lucy. We're just limiting the uh, traffic that's coming in. We're making sure that everybody's safe to include the staff and our constituents, but make sure the services are not, you know, not being not available to your constituents because your constituents need to open a business. They need to do abandonment of their DBAs. They're doing a lot of things. So it's very important that we stay connected and make sure that we provide the information that they need because of the fact that if they want to start a business, you don't want it to be the county clerk's office that compromises that or held them back from starting a business. I wouldn't want to be that person. So I'm going to make sure that we're here providing you with all the services, but what we design here is any department you need business with, like title companies, they come to the probate office. Uh, title companies go to my recording department. And a lot of times title companies, that's a business. You want to make sure your business is still operating. So we have real estate uh, agents, real estate agents depend a lot on the county clerk's office. So a lot of people depend, a lot of businesses depend on the county clerk's office. And we are here to fully provide you all the services you need, but please, you know, bear with us because we're doing everything by scheduling. We're doing everything by SMS. We're doing everything by live chat and we're doing everything by appointment. But our website is constantly being uh, updated every other day. So there's always going to be something new on our website. And if you think of something better on how to help you or assist you to get information to everybody else, you know, send us a live chat or send us a, a message and we'll be, you know, we'll be glad to look at it because these ideas come from all around Bear County and outside of Bear County. And my team is always strategizing, building, creating, and we're always here on our conference table trying to figure out what else can we do to improve, to improve the services to you, to provide services that you need. But again, that's our website. Uh, thank you, Renee Watson, for that flyer. It's a beautiful information. We've actually uh, added the QR to our van so you can actually get updated information. The mobile satellite uh, is a beautiful tool. Right now, it's put away to, to see if the COVID-19 gets worse, we gotta pull it out. But for right now, it's put away to make sure that we don't get you know, worse than what we're at right now. So hopefully everything gets better for us, but please utilize all our services that are available online. If you want information on the Secretary of State, uh, make sure you go to their actual website and get that information. But right now I'm watching Steve talking to one of my agents and they're having a good communication back and forth. So even when you're deaf and impaired, it's very important when you're deaf and impaired. And I ran into some of our customers that were actually deaf and impaired and they wanted to see how we can help them. Well, here we're helping, we're helping you now. Like now right. with me being in office, I have a sister who has disabilities and I know what the disadvantages are. So I am here trying to connect to anybody and everybody who has to do business with the county clerk's office. Outstanding. So with Thank that, you. can we put, go step back to the PowerPoint right quick? Uh, because I want to introduce our team. Thank you so much for uh, that. And um, I know you'll continue to be on our uh, presentation for a few more minutes with us, uh, but I want to go back one more back uh, so we can talk about the DBA versus LLC slide, the one prior to this one. Stephen, right, that one. So we often get uh, the inquiries for the DBA, which is sole proprietorship. Uh, we want to make sure the language is very clear. Uh, doing business as is just recording whatever name. The structure is sole proprietorship versus LLC or other forms of ownership. So when you have a sole proprietorship, that's what you're filing here in the county clerk's office. Uh, you check your name availability. You can do that through her website, and then you can book your online appointment. For the LLC, you file through the Secretary of State's office at sos.state.tx.us. 
you, when, when you're on that site, you create an account and then you process that paperwork. We often find individuals that come in who have hired attorneys, who have hired and spent enormous amounts of monies. And we see that if you have a simple form of ownership, even in an LLC, you don't have to do that. That is not required. Um, once, if you come into our office, uh, Amparo, who is our front office team member, or any one of our staff members will give you a sample form so you can look at it and see what it looks like and see what questions that they're asking you. Uh, we will do one-on-one -on -one appointments, conversations, but we do not advise or provide legal advice on how to fill out those LLCs. Uh, recently, the um, time period for the veterans uh, waiver of the $300 passed. That program was launched uh, during the legislature last year, last uh, session. Uh, two years ago, the state legislators the original first decided that we were going to do a, a uh, uh, waiver of those fees for veterans, but at $300. But that was during the legislative. So we hope if this legislative session that they will reauthorize uh, that piece of legislation and bring that program forward because we know and we've looked at uh, on average in Burke County, we, we had uh, 16,000 uh, LLCs filed in fiscal year uh, 2018, 2019 is probably additional. James Massey and Sonia Delgado on our team, they tracked that data for us working with the DBA's office. So we're very excited about the quantity and number. Post COVID, we are doing, again, we said we're doing this web, web, webinar because we know people are gonna be starting the business with this change in our economy. There are some home-based businesses there are all types of other opportunities. Uh, there's a slide also, uh, uh, if you can flip right back to from our team, so I can um, introduce our team and James and Steven are gonna look at, uh, they're gonna take over and they're gonna present uh, our side of the house on the program. So these are our team members, what we do here at the Small Business Office. Again, during this chat, please um, enter your question on the chat room, they're being answered. Uh, immediately if we can get the information. If not, we'll be calling you back or getting back with you. So you'll see James and Brenda, who is our newest team member, she's gonna be looking at construction in our federal highway program, um, Para, Steven, and uh, Sonia on our team. So thank you again, uh, Ms. Clark, uh, for all you do. And uh, thank you for our team members because uh, we could not do uh, anything that we do without all of us who, who do it for on behalf of the small business office. And then again, to Commissioner's Court for providing us with uh, the department and the resources to bring the services that we offer. So let's go to our website and James, you can uh, take over from here. Thank you. You know, I'm actually going to hand this part off to you if you want to walk through the website and let me just mute that line over there so that you don't have any feedback. Okay, Stephen, you want to cover the website? Hang on just a second, guys. We're having a little hiccup with Steven's mic there. Um, I, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to tell him to stay on this home. What you're seeing here is our Bear County SBD homepage. Um, on this page, we have a number of links listed below, uh, which covers the CARES Act and any other funding sources. A lot of folks are asking what uh, resources are out there for small business in this trying time here on our website. Um, if Steven continues to scroll down, you'll see all the different uh, resource partners that we have, all the different links we've been able to identify uh, from the SBA, uh, from here in Bear County. Um, everything that we have been able to determine as a useful resource and link to provide to you guys, uh, including information from OSHA, uh, we have available on this website. We update this nearly daily uh, with any updated information that we come across from the governor's office, from the county judge, uh, as we obtain information, we share it here on our homepage uh, just to give you guys direct access so that you as small business owners know exactly what help is out there available to you.
Brene, was there anything else you wanted to cover on the website? Mm -hmm. All right, yes. okay. You want to do a walkthrough on what they can find on the website real quick? Yeah. Could you share on your screen? Can you see my, my web page? Yes, we can. Okay, awesome. You might want to turn up your audio. I think oh, you lost uh, it so there'd be no feedback. All right. So, hey, hey guys, Steven here. Uh, uh, can you hear me a little better? Yes. Awesome. So, uh, again, with all this uh, social distancing that has been encouraged, uh, we've seen the how vital technology and accessibility has become, not only for Bear County Clerk, Lucy Adamus uh, office, but as for the small business community uh, as well. Um, our web page is designed to have all of our resources and all of our uh, technical assistance available right from our web page. Um, if you would just go to the www.smwbe webpage, um, on the left hand side, you click on that, it's going to be kind of a, a catch all for all types of uh, business opportunities, uh, whether it is becoming a business, it is um, getting training, get, just finding uh, bidding opportunities for your company. Um, so as soon as you drop in, uh, it's going to have uh, your mic is live. some information again. Uh, you will find the DBA video that we showed earlier. Lucy, some quick link. Do I need an LLC? Obtain a DBA, obtain an EIN website. But if it's done for a uh, external third party, um, it'll take you directly to their website so you can begin that process as well. So here's some information. Um, but like uh, for everyone who wants to get an LLC, do I need an LLC? So we'll open up that. So it takes you to the sos.state.tx.us uh, web, web page, and it tells you different uh, items and gives you different pros and cons of each uh, business structure. Again, you can decide which one best fits your idea or your business uh, company. Uh, again, so back to our web page. Uh, again, uh, another thing would be to get your EIN, your employee identification number. Uh, this kind of acts as your um, your business's social security number. Um, whenever you're soliciting for bid bid opportunities, you don't really want to uh, list your personal social security number. Uh, if you get a DBA, you should be able to get your EIN uh, from the IRS. Uh, the process is relatively simple. Again, they do have online capabilities as well. So uh, again, if you were to visit their website, um, it's pretty step-by-step -step exp explanation of how to proceed as well as get your uh, EIN so you can begin filing a prop, prop, uh, all your business taxes properly, as well as uh, protect yourself from identity theft. So let me go back here. All right. So uh, again, I, I, I would, I can run through all of this, not a pro problem. Uh, there is a, there's a lot of resources available to you. That's the best part about our department. Um, we constantly look for, for resources that we can provide to you that are, of course, uh, no partner with the Bear, Bear County community. Um, so again, a lot of things people look for when they first are doing a startup is where to find funding resources. Uh, again, it really depends on your uh, business activity, uh, you know, just what kind of a business you're really trying to create. Uh, but uh, you can see below we have the U.S. Small Business Administration, Lift Fund, People Fund. Uh, there's a lot of providers that are helpful to the small business community. Uh, please reach out to, I would recommend the U.S. Uh, SBA and Lift Fund, preferably first. Uh, again, all your local um, uh, funding providers can help as well. You know, your local credit unions, your bigger banks. Uh, again, I would always say uh, shoot for those last. Um, but again, they are available to you. Um, we do provide or, or we do have uh, resources for education and training programs. Uh, the best part about uh, Bear County and San Antonio is a particular uh, uh, subject and area. Um, so some of the bigger ones that we always highlight are the UTSA Small Development Business Development Center, um, as well as the UTSA Procurement and Technical Assistance Center. 
these two uh, non-grant uh, funded programs are, are basically provide any uh, no cost to uh, you. So again, we push people to those a lot uh, when they have questions on how to create a business plan, um, how to create correct marketing campaigns and, and things like that. Um, <clears throat> again, there are, there are other ones as well. Um, Launch SA, Score San Antonio. Again, the US SBA does have a local San Antonio office as well. So, uh, you know, it's not inconvenient to meet with somebody directly. Um, Stephen, click on the YouTube. Uh, we primarily say. form and help uh, people who are uh, for profit businesses. Uh, nonprofits, um, we, we typically direct them to the San Antonio uh, Area uh, Foundation. So, uh, these are just some general business sources, depending on uh, what kind of uh, area you're looking for, whether it's bidding, you're looking for education, training, you're looking for solicitation uh, mediums or avenues, such as like uh, ACOG, the Alamo Area Council of Governments. Uh, again, the best part about all this information is it is available all the time, 24-7. Uh, Nothing thing that we've pulled here to these uh, links is our personal information. There are connections or we are basically uh, accelerating your um, access to this digital media. Um, again, all this information is public and is available all the time everywhere from their websites, but we just pulled it all together and made it more of a digestible uh, place to gather information about starting your business, growing your business, and of course, uh, keeping your business during this. this is gonna be it for the uh, starting a business page. Again, I would highly recommend everybody visit our webpage in general. Uh, we post bidding opportunities, we post uh, all of it. It's a very big width, so um, go back to the PowerPoint. So Steven, can you, uh click on the UTSA uh, Small Business Development Center link. Can you hear me? Oh, sure, yeah. For the one for UTSA, because in this time of COVID, uh, right here, uh, this image that we have on the right-hand side, the UTSA Small Business Development Center is providing help uh, with for small businesses to apply for all of the stimulus money the CARES Act funds because there's a lot of paperwork there's a lot of information so we can uh if you can click on the image on the home page for the sbdc go back to our to our, our home page can you hear me Renee, steven might be having a wi-fi issue uh what i'm going to do is i have the powerpoint okay let me go ahead and yeah, can you bring up? Go ahead and share my screen. Did it drop my video? Okay. Can you pull up the UTSA SBDC? Yep, let me just minimize the speaker screen. Okay. If you can do that right quick because we want everyone to be able to get uh, assistance. And um, you can, even though they are working remotely, they, you, you can still schedule an appointment for the disaster loan assistance. Um, if you're looking at the news now, uh, Texas is number one at receiving funds uh, from all of the monies that are out there, from Lift Fund, from the different banks. Uh, we have, we received, Texas received $88 uh, billion dollars um, and it's, it's, it's very significant and we're working to get the money, the numbers from Burke County. If you have not applied, uh, go all the way up to the top. Uh, you'll see a link where it says the SBA economic disaster loan, and then the small business resources at the America's SBDC for disaster. Uh, those resources are available. Please share that with anyone in the community that is in business to include the self-employed. The self-employed link for the SBA disaster loan opened on this past Friday. Uh, there are different funds for self-employed individuals versus individuals who have employees, whether part-time or full-time. So we wanna make sure we get that information out and we'll be pushing more of that information out uh, this coming week. So I just wanted to make sure.
on that aspect. So let's flip back to the PowerPoint so we can wrap up. We have a few minute, more minutes left in our hour to go. And if we can get down to the resources screen, the PowerPoint will be uh, posted. If we can get down to the resources, to the next one, please. So if we can start there, that one has all of the links, uh, permits, education, training uh, that we have, and we can get to the next one. Uh, the developing the business plan, again, contact your SBDC if you need help with that. And it's a free service. Uh, they call it no cost advising because it's funded with your federal tax dollars uh, to be able to go forward with that. Uh, next slide, please. Next one, please. Um, let's go back one. So we want to make sure the next one. Is it one more after this one? Yeah. Next one, please. Steven took back the sharing here. Let me. Uh, are we are we wanting to be on the question screen, Renee? Yes. Okay. So uh, let's wrap up with any questions. Do we have any questions uh, in the? Um, that room that we have not answered. Uh, and then we would ask Ms. Uh, our county clerk to have any final and wrap up remarks for us. Uh, we get social, she gets social, we all are social. Uh, and we're social distancing right now. So we really appreciate everyone's patience and attention uh, to this uh, webinar. So we will have her make final and closing comments. And we thank her and her team for joining us with us we will be posting this on uh, social media websites and our website as well. Thank you. Mrs. Clark? James, you unmute her? Um, Can you? Yes, she, her, her mic is live. Uh, you're, you're live. Lucy Dominic Clark, your mic is live. You wanna close this out? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. I wanna say thank you, Renee Watson, and to your team and my team as well. Uh, thank you so much for hosting this Zoom uh, live chat for DBAs, assumed names, and LLCs. It is very important that our constituents and our community know that we're here to provide the services that they need. Uh, please stay strong. Please stay positive, And know that we're here for you no matter what. We're all in this together. We're not going to abandon you. We have not abandoned you. I am so glad to have the partnership with Renee Watson. She, I mean, I couldn't ask for anybody better than Renee Watson. And her staff and my staff uh, work very well, collaborate at all times. But please know uh, we're open to your questions. Uh, please reach out to us on live chat, visit my website. But again, thank you. And I miss everybody. I miss seeing people in the courthouse. I'm a very, I'm a Hispanic Italiano family and I'm a very, uh, you know, happy person where I wanna see everybody and see the happiness in your face after you do your DBA, or assume name or LLC. So I'm looking forward to seeing everybody coming back, but not yet, not yet. But, you know, making sure that we're here to support you at 100% plus more. But again, Renee, I could never thank you, you know, 100%. You're just like a rock star to me. And you're like my sister from another mister because you're like the best partner I've ever had. Uh, so thank you so much. And people in San Antonio, Bear County, we're here looking out for you. Okay, um, with that said, thank you, ma'am. And uh, thank you for everybody who joined the webinar. Again, uh, if you have any questions, any, any questions at all, uh, we ask that you please post them in the chat room. Uh, we're gonna leave this webinar open for a bit, even though no one's gonna be speaking, we're just gonna have this thing running. Any questions that you did not ask or that you feel that we did not address during this webinar, please post them in the chat. What's gonna happen is as soon as we're done, we're gonna close this out. We're gonna get a transcript of every question that was submitted in the chat room, and we'll then follow up. If you would please just give us your contact information, either a phone number or an email, so we can reach directly out to you if you have a question. So again, thank, thank you to everyone who joined this webinar. Thank you guys for who are sticking around. We asked that if you have any final questions for the presenters, please go ahead and post them in the chat. Uh, otherwise, you can call the office at 210-335-2478. That's my office, the Small Business uh, and Entrepreneurship Department. Uh, or you can email directly my director. She's asked that she be the one point of contact for this. R. Watson, R-W-A-T-S-O-N at B-E-X-A-R dot O-R-G. 
so again, any final questions? We'll be closing this out in just a couple minutes here. Uh, we did finish the live presentations. Please go ahead and post your questions in the chat along with your contact information, uh, a good phone number, a good email, and we'll be closing this out in just a couple minutes here. Thank you to everybody who joined us. Uh, for questions, sorry, for questions that are um, posed directly for the county clerk, you can contact that office directly at 210-335-216. Again, that's going to be for the Honorable Lucy Dame Clark and her uh, Bear County Clerk's office, 210-335-216. Or you can contact my office, Renee Watson, the SBD Director, 210-335-2478.